it's just been a year since ChatGPT first came out, which has just been astounding. Actually, we are living through a profound moment in the history of technology. And this is very well reflected in the stock market. While S&P 500 is just 9% up this year, just in this one year, Nvidia has shot up 240%. Symbotic AI has gone up 210%. Meta up 164%. C3 AI up 149%. Oh wow. And you know why? Because the stock prices are actually a projection of how well a given company can perform or how well the given company will do in the near future. So today, let's discuss the projection of AI technology. What comes next after LLMs, after ChatGPT, and even after OpenAI? Let's find out. At first, we trained machines to do simple classification. But now we are in the generative AI phase where we can feed the data into a machine and produce new data. And which companies are benefiting most from this generative AI boom? Mostly those who are building AI hardware and providing the cloud-based service. And now we are transitioning to the next phase. And in the next phase, our focus will be on the way we interact with AI. That's where the business will be focusing on in the near future. We can call this phase an interactive AI. At first, we use our hands to interact with LLMs. Now we are already interfacing with it using our voice. And the recent release of Humane AI Pin, which is a little device which you can pin on your shirt, it perfectly fits here. And that's just the beginning, because the biggest shift will happen when AI is provided with the power to make decisions and take actions in the real world. For example, you tell it, make $100,000 on Amazon in just three months. And it will do that. And it will reach out to other people, talk to them, and also it will be using other external tools to solve it. We've already taught LLMs to solve problems with three of thought prompting. The second step will be to teach it to use external tools independently. And continued natural development is taking AI from software into the physical world. We call it physical AI. In this phase, our focus will be on the physical aspect. The idea is to use the real-time information from all the different sensors and then use multimodal large language models to make decisions and immediately implement them in the real world. One of the biggest recent breakthroughs in this direction is NVIDIA's Eureka algorithm, which uses GPT-4 large language model to help robots to learn faster, thousand times faster than ever. And that's huge, because instead of making a physical robot in the lab try and fail again and again, they run parallel sessions in many virtual worlds all at once. And this massively speeds up the time it takes to train it. I will not go too much into the details in this video, but it seems that using LLMs and the iterative feedback from the environment is the future of AI for robotics. And this trend extends to AI in general, because currently it seems that the trajectory towards artificial general intelligence, so-called AGI, seems to be through this iterative deployments, which is basically getting the feedback from the real world and then feeding it back to the technology. So guys, we discussed all of these trends to eventually to come to the top AI companies. And today I will cover some interesting angles that I don't think others have covered. I found a very interesting infographics by Charlie Gua. As you can see, there is so much money flowing into AI technology and AI startups, and it's getting pretty interesting. From here, you will likely notice that these investments are coming from the same US giants, Amazon, Google, Salesforce, 
Nvidia and Microsoft. Uh, maybe a soft bank is missing here. The first observation. All of these companies are not betting on a single horse. And that's a lesson on how to diversify, guys. <laughs> a very interesting example is Microsoft's strategic partnership with the famous OpenAI. Microsoft has invested certain billions in them and promised all the computing resources they will ever need. This allows OpenAI to grow and consume even more of the Azure cloud. Eventually, OpenAI's continued success bodes well for Microsoft too. But following the recent news of OpenAI firing Sam Altman and other senior AI researchers resigning, Microsoft's stock is down 2%. I was recording this video right in the middle of the story, and there have been several twists in this OpenAI drama. As of today, it all came back to where it was. Now, when I'm thinking of it, if you want to be famous, make drama and let people talk about it. But honestly, at first I thought that something really remarkable can arise from it. For example, they could build a rival company, like it once happened with Anthropic AI, which was also founded by former OpenAI employees. Anthropic AI, who I've made a separate video about, has raised billions from Amazon, Google, and Salesforce. And have a look at the investments that NVIDIA is making. It's investing in Hugging Face, which is crucial for the entire AI ecosystem, in AI21 Labs, Runway, and Inflection AI. So startups are receiving millions from NVIDIA and then spending them right away to buy more NVIDIA GPUs. I would call it a self-reinforcing virtuous cycle. And of course, talking about top AI companies, NVIDIA is on this list because they are fully dedicated to AI technology. They are developing the whole stack from the hardware to the software into frameworks, and not many companies can say that. Well, they're making most of their money on GPU sales, clearly, but they're also making huge progress in the simulation of virtual worlds and modeling, which is hugely important for science. So they're not just making money, but also pushing science forward. They're investing huge 27% of their revenue on R&D. And just some days ago, at the supercomputing conference, NVIDIA announced their H200 GPU, which is twice as fast as H100. This will be the most wanted GPU next year. So another exciting chip announcement from the last couple of days, and many of you asked me about, is AI chips from Microsoft. I think in general, the Ignite conference showed how truly committed Microsoft is to AI. They are developing their Bing Chat AI, releasing several copilots, and they are now finally designing their own AI chips. And it's really thanks to this feedback cycle that I'm thrilled to introduce our very first custom in-house CPU series, Azure Cobalt, starting with Cobalt 100. Today, we are announcing our first fully custom in-house AI accelerator, Azure Maya. Starting with Maya 100, designed to running cloud AI workloads like LLM training and inference, this chip is manufactured on a five nanometer process, has 105 billion transistors, make it, making it one of the largest chips that can be made with current technology. We've all anticipated this development, and it has been a huge trend over the last years that everyone, Apple, Tesla, and now Microsoft are designing their own custom silicon. You know why? Because designing custom silicon is a new way to be cool. This makes me so cool. <laughs> I'm making it at least eight hours every day.
Microsoft's new chip is actually a big deal because, first of all, they will be able to optimize the entire stack from hardware to the software to train LLMs more efficiently and potentially in the future, uh, so to say, steer clear from their very expensive dependence on NVIDIA. Now, let's look at the infographics once again. Who are we missing here? Of course, OpenAI of Europe, Aleph Alpha, which I will keep for another video because it's super interesting. And who is also missing here is Meta. So where is Meta? Meta is busy doing their own thing. Just like me, there is a party and everyone is there and I'm at home doing my own thing. <laughs> Meta is not largely invested in startups but they're investing 30% of their revenue, a record high, into their own R&D. You know, that high investments in R&D are typical for companies that are, for example, chip makers, but not typical at all for the companies which make money on advertisements. Meta is developing cutting-edge LLMs, publish tons of papers, tons of research papers, and surprise, surprise, open source it. Their famous Llama 2, which is uh, one of the competitors of ChatGPT, is very, very popular among the community. When the community got the access to this model, it spurred development on the projects from thousands and thousands of contributors. Clearly, Meta has gained from open sourcing Llama model because many people developed on top of it and Meta can easily just reuse it. And by giving away something for free, I mean, it's actually not fully open source, there is, there is still licensing, but by giving away something for free, they are, in a way, decreasing the value of all the investments, which we discussed earlier. If you remember, not so long ago, there was a document that Google has no mode, neither does OpenAI. Why to pay for a restricted model when free, unrestrictive models are available and comparable in quality. We should consider where our value add really is, which is still a valid point. Please let me know what do you think about the future AI trends in the comments below and let me know which stocks you have shares in. Would be very interesting to read. Now on to the robotic AI companies. You know, in the ongoing evolution in the industrial IoT, Internet of Things, Symbotic AI is a rock star. They are automating warehouse logistics with cutting-edge robotics and AI software. And they are widely used by major retailers such as Walmart, Target, and so on. And with the financial support from SoftBank, they are growing and expanding tremendously. As a result of this, Symbotic AI stock is up 210% in just this year alone. And let's close with Tesla. They have a great vision. They have been working on a real-world AI for a decade now, and they're building the entire ecosystem around it. As you know, they started with developing robots on wheels and the FSD, full self-driving software for it. And then they built their own custom silicon for inference, hardware 3 and hardware 4, and eventually they realized the need for the training hardware. And now they're developing their Dojo supercomputer in-house. They've also launched the Grok chatbot. What's so important? Tesla is one among very few companies that are building the entire ecosystem for AI. And only few companies have something comparable, like Google, Nvidia, and now probably Microsoft. We talked about the key trend of transitioning from generative AI to interactive AI to eventually physical AI. And this is going to happen in the next couple of years. But of course, eventually we will be coming to AGI, which is a kind of a, a moving target. Now we understand it as a one single AI system that can perform any task that a human being is capable of. I'm pretty sure that ChatGPT could have been considered as AGI if some of it had happened some decades ago. 
Ideally, when AGI arrives, we will have abundant intelligence, which will help us to make fast progress in all the areas of science. And ideally, I hope it will help us to do more, to achieve more using less resources and eventually make this world a better place. If you loved this video, it would make me really happy if you share it on social media. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you being here, being a part of this community, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao.